Hey everyone, welcome to the Long Island Retro Gaming Podcast. I'm Mike Staub, and on this episode, we have a very special guest with us. I'm not exactly sure his direct title uh, with Long Island Retro Gaming, but I know that I refer to him, and many of the others refer to him as Big Boss. Mr. Joe Albino, welcome, and it's so good to have you here. Uh, you're 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 the man. Let's let's just go ahead and say that you're the best. Joel well, is the best, look, and uh, my, ti- I'm glad my to have title. You. I often go by "Hey You Guy" or <laughs> uh, "Hey Idiot." So those are my two. Uh, <laughs> my official title is actually operations coordinator. But thank you for having me here on the show. It's good to be back on the other side of talking on it and not listening to it, uh, which is <laughs> listening to it is fun too. Um, I would like to give a shout out to. Uh, both of our listeners out there, you know, two guys who I know who listen, uh, Big Tony hey, and Master Dave. Uh, thank you guys for listening, and I wanted to give you a little little uh, acknowledgement there. Thank but, you. Yeah, thank thanks you. for having me, Mike. No, of course, man. Of course. I, I was, I'm always excited to get you on the show, and I always like to do it at the beginning of the year if I can, because I always like to f- call this episode State of the Retro, because it's the beginning of the year. Um, we're coming off of the Expo of 2022. And after not being able to do it for a few years, you know, we were able to come right back in and, and hit the ground running in in 22. And, you know, to be, to be honest, it was like for, I knew we were going to get it done. I knew it was going to be great. Uh, And I knew the team. (laughs) I didn't have your, uh, your optimism, but you know. Yeah. It's that wide eyed optimism. Um, But, you know, as the, as the operations coordinators, uh, as someone who, you know, spends an incredible amount of time piecing this thing together, innovating, trying to make it better than the year before, even though we thought the year before was the best we could do. After not being able to do this for two years, um, is there a point where you get where it's just like, is, is it excitement or is there is there like fear that I mean, hopefully this is successful? Like I'm always so interested in how the mindset works when you're trying to get this thing together, especially after we really didn't do events for a while. Uh, well, as you know, as with everybody, COVID was a rough time. Uh, mm-hmm. Even if you came out unscathed, you know, health wise and financially and everything, which <laughs> excuse me, a lot of people did not. Yeah. Um, just the fact that like, I mean us, right. As an organization, like we were go, 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 go for, five, six years, and then like nothing, right? And then, well, at first there was like the scariness and everything in COVID, and then yeah, life kind of settled down, and then there was nothing. And then 2021 came, and then there was nothing. And then there was kind of like, can we do it? Can we not do it? And that was a whole stressful, you know, uh, uncertain thing in itself because we didn't know what the heck we could do. You yeah. know, I mean, we did Uplink, which was a lot of fun, and um, I think that it, definitely had its place during that time. And I mean, I personally got me through it. Like it's kind of like doing a show again. Right. And it was, it was fun. Um, so then, you know, so coming into, um, 2022, I mean, like, you know, we hadn't done a show in years. Um, you know, there's, there's not a lot of like, you know, like money there to like, you know, try new things. You know, it's been years since anything's come in. So, it's like there's two options. Either we play it super safe and we kind of limp along and just see if we could kind of get it done and, and then just see where we're at, like take stock afterwards. Or we go in with guns blazing and full yellow with, you know, Duke Nukem catchphrases strapped to our backs and and just, you know, screaming with like a Kool-Aid man busting down the crystal aviation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And uh, you could feel it in the rooms, you know, in the cradle, like as the event was going on, it felt like that electricity was back. I I know we had done Festival of Games, you know, earlier, uh, you know, right around the end of 2021 into 2022, like right before the holidays. But we still hadn't done the full expo. And I I agree, man. Uplink was great. I I loved working on Uplink. I I love that 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 expo, that online expo, I mean, man, did it like totally make that weekend, you know, make the weekend that much better when it was going yeah, on. Fun. It, it was a lot of fun. It was, it was wild. It was, it was just a good time. But, you know, 
nothing quite feels like uh, having everyone there, uh, getting the people in, seeing the folks in costume, playing games with people, you know, just everyone getting excited about it being mostly okay, right? Mostly okay to to do this again. I felt like um, the expo for me personally was kind of like, kind of like all of us together saying, we're going to be safe. We're going to be careful, but let's get back to business. And uh, it was, I don't know. I think it's the best one I've ever been a part of uh, to be, I to mean, be fair. I'd agree with that. I, I spent, you know, for three years, I worried and worried yeah, because yeah. that's, I mean, maybe my job should be head worrying guy. Um, <laughs> I mean, like straight up, you know, like middle of the night, you wake up and you have some random thought like, oh my God, what, 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 what? But this happens. What about this? Um, but so for three years, I, you know, anticipated and worried the heck out of what the heck, what it was going to look like when we finally came back. Um, one of the, one of my thoughts was, are people going to show up? Like, is, has our time come and passed? Like, is this now not something that people are into? Um, or like, has enough time gone by where they're not going to remember or yeah. they're not going to know, you know? Um, so even like going into, early last year in 2022 and we start to um i mean we kind of had like some planning done from years before but we had mm -hmm. to still do a lot obviously um and i, I thought like I don't, I don't know what this is going to look like and if there's one thing that personally uh got me through it it was working with you know you and the rest of the team because like if i had any worries or any like doubts or um you know, men mental f falters. I don't know if that's the right term, but uh, you know, the the team is there. Is like, yeah, hell yeah, man, we're gonna do this. And you know, then it like helped help bump me back up, right? You know, and as it started coming together, um, I I realized just for for a quick refresher to um for everybody out there in podcast land, we started twenty twenty two. We're like, okay, we're gonna do the show. Okay, how, what are we going to do? And we realized that we had so much stuff. Like, we had so much stuff. We we didn't even know what we had. So we're like, how can we plan a show where we don't even know what we have? So we spent the first six months just inventorying everything we did, meeting once or twice a month, going through. We got asset tags. We got a system. And we got everything in there. Then once we had everything in there, we could, like, export it out. Then we're like, okay. Now, how are we going to, what, so we actually started planning the show itself as far as like free play and, and sex specialized sections go in like the spring almost. So like we were super behind the ball. Um, so seeing all that come together and I mean, this is a, a personal moment that I remember from, from last August, I remember walking around on Friday because it's another one of my titles and probably like chief walking guy, right? Cause all yeah, 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 yeah. Laps all weekend. Right. Um, and I'm walking around and I'm, I'm in the, the right side of the museum, which has the free play, the museum tournaments, uh, et cetera. And I'm just looking around. Cause like, it's one thing where it's in your head. You're like, okay, I know that this is going to go here and this is going to go here. And then you see it, you see all this stuff out. We said, okay, we knew we were going to have like 50 PCs out ish or something, but then it's another thing to see them running to see the Oregon trail section and to see like the, um, you know, the, the Sierra game section and, you know, and then like the museum, I mean, we could talk about for, for six hours was, it was like, I mean, I was blown away and I, if anybody should not have been blown away, it was me because I knew what was coming. Right. Um, and I was like, wow, this is really, this is really something special. And I could not believe that we pulled that off after not doing this for years. It, it's, uh, it's a testament uh, to everybody who we have working, um, you know, we have a team of about, you know, uh, hard a core team of, I'd say about 15 mm -hmm. ish people. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and these people, uh, you know, I want everybody to know that these people work their butts off all year round. They, they go once or twice a month to our storage. They'll, they'll pack, they'll unpack, they'll label, they'll clean their, t they'll test, uh, you know, George Portugal, like whenever anything breaks, he'll take it, he'll fix, <laughs> yeah. he'll fix it up, he'll he'll do whatever he's got to do to get. It. I mean, we 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 have such a synergy, right, in the team, and and all these great things that we say about the expo and all the great things that 
other people say about it. It's because of the, you know, the love, the effort, uh, the dedication and the synergy of these people. I don't mean to gush, but I rarely get to talk about our people. Um, so you put me on the podcast. So here I am. I'm doing it. So this, <laughs> screw you, Mike. It's your fault. <laughs> You know, uh, I will say it's it's just an incredible group of people to work with, uh, people who are so driven and they care so much about this this particular you know niche. And it's amazing to see how not only you know is the expo just something to go to. Like you know, it's hard to to explain to people until they see it. You know, I had family members come that you know don't even like games and stuff just to see it and they also think the the cradle of aviation is a pretty pretty cool spot to be in you know yeah. anyone who likes aviation or or space or anything like that it's it's really cool but they see it and they they they're amazed they're like oh oh you guys you're just a bunch of you're just a bunch of folks running this thing and it's like it's special not everyone always puts the two and two together um to realize like they know how much work goes into it but seeing the finished product is it's worth more than any amount of work you know, seeing yeah. people getting excited about that out in public again, seeing friends that, you know, go to the go to the expo to uh, to, to say hello and like hang out the whole day because they're just like, that's my weekend. You know, um, it's become like a thing to do and one of the most fun things to do uh, in the summer for my for my money uh, on Long Island. Uh, that's right, folks who are listening outside of New York State on Long Island. We say on Long Island here, not in Long Island. But, um, you know, it's it's a great. It's a great thing to do. Uh, I think the retro community is incredibly strong. I think it's the strongest it might ever have had been. Um, and the the expo shows that. People love this stuff. People will come from out of state to come to this stuff. So it's uh, it's really special. So um, you're right. The team is the team is everything. And uh, it's a bunch of really driven nerds. Getting yeah. their stuff together, you know, Kool Aid Man and all over the place. And a lot of these people came. Uh, a lot of our team came. Um, Long Island has always had an extremely strong retro gaming community. I yep. mean, that's why the expo kind of, you know, when we started, when we were in one tiny little room back twenty million years ago in twenty fifteen. Uh, I mean, you know, and it, when we when we blew the doors off the place, that was because the community and you know these people we have, they came like we didn't fly them in from you know. Illinois, like they're they're local people. Yeah. Um, they you know, they're big, they're they're fans, they have the passion, and we just kinda got it's basically us just getting together in a room, being like, Oh, you like this too? Okay, cool. All right, what if we did this? What if we did that? Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I totally get that. And you know, it's it's a it's a great community. But now you're hearing people when I when I post stuff online or I see posts gets uh stuff gets posted by our media team, um you see that stuff and you see people from all over the place commenting, oh, oh man, I really want to get to that one. Oh man, I hear that's amazing. So it's got the words out there, Joel. It's out there. People know and they will come and they will play video games for an entire weekend. And um, I think- my only goal. <laughs> that's, that's really where this kind of stems from, right? It's just like, you know, I just want an excuse to, to play video games or to give people the ability to play video games for an entire weekend. And uh, as we get older, um, it's gotten difficult. You know, I, I often like to joke with one of my closest friends. I'm like, we need a real ninth grade Saturday. You know, we need to like sit down in my basement, play video games and similar stuff for like an entire day. It's just, it's just hard. Um, and, you know, um, I think the expo is a perfect example for that. Um, I think my, ne my next question for you, because, you know, obviously the expo is, is just awesome. Uh, I can only, I can only gush about it uh, for, for years and years. Um, I guess my next question for you too is like, as someone who is, you know, you're running, you're running with this, you're working with this, with, with all of us, right? We're all working together. We're running this all together. We're making this show happen. It's not just really a show anymore, is it, Joel? Long uh, long no, long we're, we're kind of like a, we're a year round operation now. Yeah. Um, yeah. And kind of didn't, I'm, I, uh, <laughs> I recall the days uh, very fondly when we had like an off season. Cause that yeah. was like yeah. nice uh, when I played some like RPGs or something. Um, no, we do. Um, I mean, expo. So long Island retro gaming, like the group or the organization or however you want to label it. Um, 
we do other stuff too. Like we do uh, library programs for kids. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. we have a team that goes around and does that um, at the request of of libraries or uh, anyone else. We've done it a couple other events too, like uh, breweries. Uh, We have our YouTube team. Yeah, which there's a lot of crossover here. So like a lot of these people do this are <laughs> doing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everyone's um, working on something. Right. Uh, and that I mean, we're kind of working on like putting a little more uh, gas in the tank with that. Uh, and just from a show perspective, it's not just like, OK, we start planning the show X day and everything because we're we're constantly um you know, things will come up. Hey, we just found this great thing. Should we buy it? Okay, cool. What do you think? Uh, okay, great. Um, oh, yeah. our our Slack is like a, it's an all year round thing. Like it doesn't like, it doesn't like quiet down, you know? No, like there's, no. There's always activity. Certain channels like will go up and down depending on the, the year and the purpose. But uh, pretty much like we are, you know, we're, the, I mean, also because putting on a show like this is, it's not just, this is the thing. It's not just like a, it's not a cookie cutter thing where you say, okay, we have 10 Nintendos and uh, 10 Genesis, uh, NES, sorry, 10 Genesis, and we're going to put these out and this is going to be our show. <laughs> That's part of it. But I think a big part of it is the intangibles. And I think that's what a lot of people pick up on and why they like the show so much. And those intangible things come out of creativity. Yeah. Right. And well, where does that come from? it comes from anywhere and everywhere. And it just comes from sometimes just noodling around. Like sometimes yeah. I will just, cause I don't, you know, like most 40, almost 43 year old men in today's world who are big video game fans. I don't have a lot of time to play with video games, you know? Yeah. I get, yeah. I get, I get some good time in, but sometimes I'll just boot up my mister and I'll just launch a system. I kind of don't know about and I'll just place 10 random game just to like just just noodling around it's like if i'm playing guitar and i'm just kind of like you know just kind of yeah playing around see if something comes out of it and um you know maybe sometimes i'll get an idea <clears throat> and it's not just me like the whole you know the whole team like um one of the best ideas from last expo came as a joke out of somebody's mouth it was the 50th anniversary of pong and uh we were doing thing we had a banner made up and we, we put the machine, we put the banner, and it's all great. And while we're setting up, I think even it was Friday or Thursday night, and out of someone's mouth, it's like, oh, oh yeah, you know, we should just get a, a cake and, and blow out candles. And I'm like, that's such a cool idea. <laughs> so then I have um, I have my wife. She's I'm like, call bakery, see who could do this in like 24 hours. <laughs> and, uh, and we ended up getting a sheet cake with the picture like a pong printed on it and we had the whole expo on saturday night saying happy birthday pong and you know everybody got a piece of cake and uh it's just it was just so much fun it's yeah it's those moments that you you can't you can't plan that right and that's right. kind of that's kind of how like like you were talking about the slack with the people you know that's kind of how this stuff works like good ideas kind of jump out of every every possible corner and the pong cake was the best that was so good um that was such a good plan a good idea and you know happy 50th to pong geez video games are getting old um you know it's it's really special but it's also great to see how lauren retro gaming uh, is growing as a group and doing more out there on, on the video side of things with the youtube and and uh, i know that's going well i mean i watched i watch a bunch of the videos um you know, obviously, all they all kind of stand out as is really great stuff, and um, and I I feel like we just keep getting more and more awesome stuff. I remember, you know, when I first started my first year working with Brendan in the museum, I'm like, wow, this is really cool. We got some great stuff, and then last year, it was like some of the stuff we obsessed over was like old news because we had gotten so much newer, weirder stuff into our section. And that's because of the folks that work with everyone. You know, you got to be in it to win it. And you got guys like George who I think they could probably fix, he could probably fix just about anything um, with, with, you know, him, him and his company, give him a shout out one up restorations. But I feel like there's always new stuff getting picked up and there's so much, there's always different oddball stuff uh, that we find out there. Um, but that brings people in. We've got stuff for the casual folks who, you know, might've grow, grew up playing uh, Genesis and just want to play Sonic two. 
It's amazing how many people just want to sit down and play the Oregon Trail or Sonic 2 or Super Mario Brothers 3. But then yeah, there's the hell, folks that- I come, want to play yeah. Sonic 2, you know? <laughs> yeah, me too. It's a great game. <laughs> but, you know, I, I think it's it's good. And it shows, you know, um, the strength of what the medium is, right? And it shows the strength of the brands and the games because it's not just old people, older folks. It's not just oh, no, it's, it's everybody. I it's mean, kids. One it's thing, everything. I one thing, and I mean, when we're talking about our team and everything, I'd be remiss not to mention um, what I think is one of the reasons all these ideas come to the surface and everything is. I I think we have a really good culture, right? Like mm-hmm. nobody's mm-hmm. like afraid to throw out an idea. There's no like, yeah. You know, I mean, I hope that there's no like gatekeeping or, or anything like. Like, I think we try to really have an open uh, atmosphere and environment for anybody. Like, even if people just come in, like new volunteer into Slack, hey, you know, I, what about this? And like, I'm not going to say we can always do it, but we always want to hear it. No, it's true. It's true. It's, um, it's, it's about that comfort. No one feels like an outsider. Um, and unfortunately, sometimes you can get that with some of these more niche uh, niche interests. Um, and I always appreciated that about the, the expo and about the group. Uh, when people come to the expo, it's like, everyone's welcome. It's, there's like, it's, it's, I know we're all frantic and running around like crazy, but there is just this, this like swell of positive energy throughout the whole building, um, where I think is really special. Um, it's really special. And I think, I think it's because of the people running it. Uh, I, I also that. see us kind of like as video game DJs. Yeah, right? yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So if you if you're at a wedding and there's a DJ and I mean he can absolutely and I probably everybody has been to a wedding like this, play the wrong song at the wrong time, not reading the crowd, right? Yeah. And uh yeah, and like and it has an effect, right? People mm-hmm. will have a bad time. Yes. Now, obviously it's a little bit different, but what we try to do is be that those DJs where we try to play to our crowd and like, I mean, yes, we have to put out like the, like we'll put out the deep cuts, but we'll also put out the crowd pleasers, but we try to do it in like unique and fun ways. Um, like we always want to push the envelope. We, we've been really getting into a lot of like weird system link stuff that yeah, I've yeah. never really seen before we started like Dreamcast, like not network, like link cables, yeah. or custom made uh, virtual boy <coughs> modded links. Um, Which was awesome. Yeah, stuff like that. And and that's, I mean, it's not just to do it for the sake of, well, the virtual way was to do it for the sake of doing it. <laughs> for, the, for the most part. It's not just for the sake of doing it. It's to, like, give a, a fun and unique experience. And, yeah, that just kind of adds to the magic, I think. Mm-hmm. Because when you could walk in, if somebody who doesn't know anything could sit down at one of these systems and, like, just play and have a good time and, like, wow, this is great. If somebody who's into the hard stuff, somebody like us, right, <laughs> who, uh, you know, is like Super Mario just doesn't do it anymore. I need the hard stuff. <laughs> and you see like this, this fr- freaking, you know, two player virtual boy link cable setup running a hacked version of Street Fighter 2, which never came out for the virtual boy. And two people are playing head to head. And it's being output to an LCD monitor. So you can see what they're seeing inside of the eyepieces. You're just like, this is awesome. Yeah, we've officially gone plaid uh, to quote yes. Spaceballs. Yes, yes. Uh, you know it's uh, it's 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 real. It's magic, right? It's retro gaming magic, which um always you know I always like to ask this question for for the gaming side of folks that I speak to on this. Um, I feel like retro gaming is no longer just about time, uh, or or era, right? I feel like retro is you know, I don't want to say something super hacky and be like Richard's lifestyle, man. But like, it's one of those things where I feel like it's, it, yes, it is about games that are older, right? It is about classic gaming, but at the same time, there's a lot of modern stuff going on in retro. I feel like the retro, from my experience, being a retro gamer or someone who enjoys retro and classic gaming, I feel like it's the best time for that probably yes. ever. Right, I feel like right now ex- is absolutely, yeah. absolutely because we're, I mean, unfortunately uh, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, our 
the the Nintendo generation, I think, was the biggest. The NES generation was the biggest tidal wave. Yeah. You know, and then into the 16 bit. I mean, and then it never slowed down. Like when kids who were born, say, and I was born in 80, right? Kids who were born in 90 and started playing N64 and everything. But now, you know, starting with the NES generation, uh, we're all now in our 40s. Most of us have steady jobs. We have disposable income. We uh, have time. We're, we're done with our 20s. Like, so we're kind of like, have time for like hobbies, right? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And I think that not, I don't think that's the only, I'm not saying that there's not, there's absolutely, you know, teenagers and 20 something year olds and 50 and 60 year olds who are, uh, who are big fans. And, and there were systems before the NES. I know that. And they just, it, I don't think it, you know, besides like the Atari uh, title wave for like a couple of years there, I think that the NES really just was like a whole thing. Um, but, you know, now you got all these people. And that's where like this groundswell comes from. And you got mm-hmm. people and like then now you got all these <clears throat> all these these different things coming out of nowhere. Like I was just at Magfest and I bought um the expo has a pretty awesome uh vinyl record collection that yeah. we play. Um that uh Brian Funk plays for us. And there was a couple of record vendors and there are new records, like artists doing new music in 2022, 2023. 23 and they were like lo-fi versions of classic game soundtracks which is like i mean that's kind of like my jam right so number one to me i'm like holy uh moly that's awesome (laughs) but then i'm like like what a weird and cool thing like what an offshoot like who would even think you know like okay like you first you have people like recording the music to vinyl which is great and then you have bands start to play the music uh like uh, like Bit Brigade and Super Thrash yeah, Brothers, yeah, right? yeah, which yeah, is yeah. awesome, right? Because then now, like, you're seeing live performances. Um, and then, but now you're doing like different recreations of these songs that we all know in different styles. And and that's just one extremely small. I mean, look at um, look at the, the handheld modding scene, right? There are co- whole companies like Handheld Legend and Retro Modding um, who. Just sell parts so you can change out uh, shells on your Game Boy, Game Gear, you know, different Game Boy versions, whatever. You could put in your screens, different color buttons, different. I mean, there's there's like billions of combinations you could do. And that's just for the system itself. That's not even playing the games, you know? Yeah. Then yeah. you have your homebrew and you, I mean, it's, and there's just so much. So, yes, if you, if you're into classic games, uh, this is. This is your time. Yeah, it's because it's the most accessible for us and for most people that that I think it's ever been. Like, I mean, growing up with an NES and then a Super NES and a Genesis, and I was lucky growing up. I had like a kind of all the game consoles I wanted. And, you know, still, I didn't have anywhere near the access to the amount of games I have now because of oh, yeah. stuff nobody like did. nobody did we had we all had our small little section of games and you know if you were lucky you maybe got a game on your birthday maybe you got a game for the holidays but like you know growing up it was like hey you have i had like all right i had 12 nes games and you know what three or four of them were bad and i would have to rent from blockbuster or go to a friend's house and borrow games and trade oh, and I, do all that stuff i had a rough i had a rough allowance uh experience yeah. i say saved up for like a month or two i go out oh no oh no i bar i buy uh and look this might actually be a good game i've never had the wherewithal to go back and see but i bought star voyager and i i effing hated it i was <laughs> so pissed uh i couldn't figure it out it was just I, I was just like man i just spent i mean you know 50 60 bucks to a nine-year-old kid is yeah like, dude everything right that's everything and uh and that's like 80s 90s money so that's a little yeah, different yeah, yeah. than today you know and that's... you know you know you won't get your chance at another game for uh you know for whatever another couple months or if there's a holiday coming up i don't know but yeah so you know what i got beef with you star voyager i'm going to <laughs> go back as as an old man and see if if i was just like not willing to put in the time as a kid or if the game sucks uh yep. so more to come on that all right. Well, let us know how how your uh, how your 
your chronicle with Star Voyager turns out. But, you know, with, when it comes to the access, you know, you brought up the Mister before, which, you know, is a great device that has given people access to essentially all these old consoles. You know, whether it's Analog, who has made these incredible consoles that, you know, just this weekend, Joel, I was playing with, uh, I believe it's your um, Mega SG, um, which um, is, is, is a wonderful. I just got an Analog Pocket, which is like the coolest thing I've ever bought. Um, Did you know? Uh, and we'll do a quick sidebar here, but did you know on that Mega SG, and as an audio guy, uh, you're going to flip your, your lid if you don't know this. You know how this Genesis had different sound chips in it, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a menu in there where you can change the sound chip. Oh, and you could listen man. to the audio as it was through like the different versions of Genesis. Oh, that's so cool. Isn't that I cool? I didn't realize that. Yeah. I got to I I'm got I got to hook that up and play it. Oh man. That like that like makes me want to take it out and play it like right now. But yeah. I can't. We're doing this show. I'll do it when we're done. Well, I'll don't worry. I'll do it when we're done. But, you know, um that's amazing. See, but uh, you know, Analog Analog's a good company, man. They do some really cool stuff. That's a good company. Uh I love so the retro really- modding scene too. What's that? In regards to, to accessibility, like, I mean, I'm a big FPGA guy, um, yeah. as you would probably expect somebody with my, you know, with what I've done in my life to be. Um, yeah. But like, you know, there's people who get the Raspberry Pi and load it up and they got every game and like, look, it works, you know, it may not yeah. work the best. Um, and if you listening to this and you have a Raspberry Pi, just get a mister. It's so much better. <laughs> um, I-, I need to get a mister. That's like my thing. Yeah, I think need, this year. You need to get a mister. But, um, <laughs> I, I might need I mean, more look, than one. The, I, I'll just, um, I don't want to spend a whole bunch of time on like, you know, playing games on, on, uh, yeah. not non real systems, but yeah, yeah, yeah. the Mr. I just, I, I just have, I'm so, I'm so passionate about this. The Mr. has been the biggest single biggest, uh, incredible leap forward for this hobby. I think ever since, since the first ROM was dumped, like for yeah. preservation, right? Yeah. It, what it has where it has come and the things it has able, been able to do uh, because of all of the people working on it is, uh, I mean, like, I, I cannot say enough about how much I am blown away and thrilled and happy and and gives me all these warm, fuzzy feelings that something like the Mister exists because of the community and because of the accessibility. Because now anybody can spend you know, a couple hundred bucks, depending on what kind of, you know, how they want to kit it out um, and play almost any system that's come out between 1970 and 1995 in just like they're playing it, just like they have the actual hardware in front of them and they're playing it. And that in a box that's the size of the palm of my hand. Yeah. And it operates like the real hardware in you know in every way, um, and it's just incredible. I, I just I I cannot. I'm still looking at it. I'm like I can't believe this thing freaking exists. Like, holy crap! You know, you know, ghost. You really, <laughs> you really, uh, you're really selling this for me, man. I, I I really need to get one. I know, I know. I've been saying it for a few years now that I got to get one. I will, I will. But. Uh, that's awesome. And you know, it all is right. like, it's just like we were talking about with, with us, right. It's all about the community. It's all about the group. It's all about the people who, who believe in this stuff and make it happen. And there's some great, great, great alternatives out there for folks, uh, to be able to play all these, all these old games. But even at the same time, there's so many new games coming out right now that are very much retro games. You know, the whole mm-hmm. indie market, the whole indie scene, uh, is very just rife with retro stuff. I mean, I know Crunchyroll um is putting out a game that's a Game Boy game. It's a Game Boy color game on a Game Boy I color cartridge. I didn't know which that. I pre-ordered. Right. Yeah. It's like a it's like a Zelda it's like a Zelda like. So I I pre-ordered it and I'm gonna that's play awesome. it in my analog pocket. You know, it's it's um we, we keep seeing this. We see new cartridges, you know, limited run um limited run games is always putting out these new cartridges and and things like that. And I guess that's 3D printing and that's all that stuff that just makes it so much so much more accessible for people. Uh, it's it's beautiful and it's magical. Um, but I mean, I, kn- I know an idiot who bought uh, three titles of re-released Falcom games that was that on <laughs> five and a quarter. Uh, uh, was it five and a three? And a, yeah, five and a quarter inch floppy 
for the Sharp X68000, Japanese only releases that got had to get imported. Uh, yeah, man, that guy sure is a dumbass. <laughs> That guy is me, by the way. Uh, <laughs> I, I have the excuse that I want to do a video on it and then give it uh, to Brendan, who has a 68,000, to put out in our museum. Uh, yeah. So that's, you know. I mean, hey, listen. I definitely would have st- done it if that wasn't the case. But, you know. <laughs> it's just, still cool. It's so cool. It's still so cool. cool. And I, I love that. The X68,000 right, is definitely something to behold uh as let's we, get back as to I the show because yeah we, I, we're probably supposed to be talking to the show and we're getting off well no yeah. man this is a little bit about all this stuff it's about the show it's about 2022 it's about retro gaming right now so yeah we're at a perfect transitional point to talk about 2023 because 2023 is upon us we're a month in when this Uh-oh. is being recorded what do you got for us for 2023 what what is the expo looking like what can we expect what excites you what terrifies you give us it all give us give it all to us Okay, everything excites me and everything terrifies me. The end. Um, <laughs> no. I mean, sometimes it's exciting to be terrified. That's why horror movies yes. exist. Uh, well, so all right, what's <laughs> we're kind of. I mean, last year was by far the biggest expansion of the show in the in the space at the at the cradle that we've ever done. So there is still a little more space we can eke out, and I think we're going to do that, but we're definitely starting to come up against a limit of like what we could fit and we can yeah. still fit more and we're going to fit more, but I'm just saying like, it's not like, I mean, we expanded because prior uh, to last year's show, we had the tabletop gaming expo in that right side space. Yeah. They got their own show. So then we got to reclaim that space and we basically filled up 70% of it yeah. uh, last year. So, I mean, we uh we actually just started off our kickoff meetings for the year to talk about you know each each section and what we're going to do so i think that the the main theme without getting too much into the weeds of anything is to just basically take what we have and improve um i always when i heard years ago that intel does a i don't know if they still do it but they did like a tiktok method with their processors they do like a tick one year which is like a whole new uh like uh, architecture and whatever features. And then the next year would be a talk, which would just be a refinement of the previous chip, right? They just make it a little bit better, maybe clean it up, whatever. So I, I kind of like to loosely try to do that with the show, mm-hmm. right? Save like huge innovations for one year. And then the following year, uh, just, okay, what was, what can be better? And let's, you know, let's, let's clean up the edges. So uh, I know that, our classic PC section is definitely going to be expanded because we yeah. got about 20 or 30 new um, like early Windows, like nine, Windows 95 or like some DOS 486 systems, um, maybe some 386. I don't even know what we have. I got to see. But we got a whole <laughs> bunch of stuff. Uh, we got to get those. We got to try to bulletproof those a little bit, get some um, maybe some uh, solid state flash you know, rather than old hard drives in them and uh, but we're going to have those running, you know, actual old games on actual, nothing wrong with emulation, but it's always nice to have the actual stuff yeah, running. Yeah, of course, of course. Um, I was talking to uh, you and the rest of uh, the museum staff the other day, and there are plans to expand the Pokemon trading section, which was a huge sleeper hit, which kind of, uh, Eric, right? That was Eric? Eric, yeah, Eric, man. Eric's yeah, Eric a, Eric's a of, beast left field he's like i want to do this thing trade rare pokemon we said okay great and the poor guy didn't get up for like three days i mean it was like that he was mobbed um he may also be one one. of the nicest people i know so he he likes to sit there and just talk to people so it's like i get it (laughs) i get it he's very very energetic and enthusiastic and he's just a great terrific guy so if you didn't get to the pokemon center or the pokemon section uh for those of you listening if you didn't get to it last time you better get to it this time because it's going to be even better. We already have ideas we're throwing into it. And we're going to get him help so he could take a break. Uh, that's that's super important too. Yeah, of course. You got to take that time off. You we, uh, let's see. We, uh, I mean, we're always acquiring arcade machines. So there's definitely going to be some new arcades. Since last show, I know we've gotten, I think got a Contra. Uh, we got one of my favorite games, Revolution X. 
Oh, nice. Starring Which, Aerosmith. <laughs> yes. Lots of people will tell me that that is not a good game, but they would be incorrect. Uh, <laughs> I you know I don't even, I'd have to talk to George to see what we got, but we we we've probably gotten at least another five or six, and and uh, we have another maybe ten projects which are not completed that we have to work on and get out. Um, and Seamus from the Cradle Aviation and the Arcade Age exhibit really helps us out with that too. Uh, him and George basically are the, are the arcade guys, just always you know running around fixing. Yeah, repairing, you know, figuring out what needs to be done. Um, yeah, we got it. We got it. We got to, you know, thank the cradle, right? <laughs> like yes, so much. No, cradle, I mean, forget about it. Yeah, we couldn't do it without them. Yeah. Uh, the vendor, the marketplace is going to be um, amazing already. I mean, we opened up registration. We already got like 50 or 60 applications. Uh, oh, baby. So like, you know, there's going to be like people come here to buy video games and they're going to find them. Uh, Good. So you know, uh, marketplace yeah. is going to be great. That's the, beautiful. The panels team has been working on, uh, you know, on getting the guests uh, reaching out and starting to lock people in. Uh, I don't think we're going to be doing any, any announcements for a couple of months. Um, okay. I could be wrong. Not my department. So don't take my word on it, but <clears throat> that's coming together. And I think we always have a pretty good, uh, pretty strong game with our guests. And I think that's going to continue. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, so obviously you talked about the tick and talk kind of the vibe, and I, I really get that. I appreciate that. I think that's the way to do it. Uh, even even though even when it's a talk year, you can still still bring in new stuff, right? As you said, oh, yeah. but like, what's the what's the when you talk about refinement, right? What's the one thing you're looking to kind of fine tune, um, and and with with 2023 as opposed to 2022. Off the top of my head, besides the the normal uh, iterative improvements, like adding more things to the history exhibit and stuff yeah. like that, um, we the free play team met last night, and we want to make better signage for because as we're we're reaching deeper into the bag of tricks and um, like doing these crazy setups, we can't always have a staff member. 20 you know the whole every second of the show like showing people how it works yeah so we want to start making little like sheets just <clears throat> not even anything like in depth just saying number one what it is because you know you could look at something not know what it, what it is because oh it's a ps2 yeah yeah but it's a ps2 and it's doing this this and you could do this crazy thing on it like this is a uh, this is twisted metal land with these steering wheels so you can play a game with the two guys over there right yeah or gals yeah. um so we want to up our signage game a little bit and have things more clearly labeled. Um, I know that theming is a big thing with, with the free play team. Uh, George Smith did his racing game section. That was great. Uh, it, which is, I mean, he got like checkered, you know, checkered tablecloths. And stuff. <laughs> I mean, he did is amazing. Right. Um, and that was super fun. So, you know, theming is definitely something that I think we're, I don't can't, can't I can't think of any specific plans right now, but it is something that we're always like trying to get more into. Mm -hmm. um, I know for me personally, I love homebrew. I've always yeah. have. I, I think it's so, so great. Um, if anyone's listening to this uh, and if you have a homebrew game, uh, anybody who makes homebrew, if you if it is playable on original hardware, you are invited to showcase the game for free at the expo. Email the email address. We have a homebrew section. We will give you a table. You can hang out, show the game off. Um, and I, I would love to have as many homebrew people as possible because uh, to me, they're almost like the, you know, they're like the heartbeat. I love that. I love the homebrew stuff. I, I love that people are still, you know, doing that, still making things that run uh, on the, on the old hardware. But I think, I think Joel, we, I think we got, I think we have some, some work uh, set out in front of oh, us yeah. to, to, to make this, to make this go really well. You know, I think the drive and the commitment, uh, is, is great. And I think that everyone out there, um, can expect 2023's expo to be another banger, right? It's going to be another home run event. And, uh, we have announced we, we, the dates are definitely been announced and I believe, uh, is pre-sale or whatever. Yeah, is ticket, that, is that ticket, live? Ticket, ticket, yep. Tickets are on sale. Um, I mean, basically if you, you know, if you've never been to the show, 
you just should know this. We, our goal is always to make it a place where if you like, if you like video games, you're going to have a good time. Yeah. If you like classic video games, this is really the place you want to be. Uh, if you kind of like don't really aren't into video games and your friend wants to bring you along, I think, and our goal is that you're still going to have a good time. Like it's not, you know, there's nothing, there's no like, uh, you know, gamer test you have to pass to come and have a good time here. Like there's enough stuff going on and enough, uh, you know, activities and just stuff to see where you're going to have a good time regardless. Yep. I, I, I agree 100%. Uh, I've, I've had friends and my wife has come. My wife's not the biggest gamer in the world. She's like slightly getting into video gaming a little bit here and there. And she comes the whole weekend. So it's one of those things where it's just a fun thing to do and it's a fun place to be. And it's got something for pretty much everyone. Um, so, you know, Joel, thank you. Thank you for being on the show. Uh, it's really great to have you here. Um, appreciate all the hard work that you put in um, doing this thing and, you know, ra- <laughs> wrangling up this uh, herd of cats <laughs> that the team is and, you know, fun, wild, wacky cats, but, you know, a bunch of cats nonetheless. We do got some wacky cats. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that's what um, makes it fun. Exactly. Exactly. And um, it makes all the hard work worth it. So, before we before we go today, uh, Joel, can you just tell everyone out there where they can find us on the internet and uh, where where they can go to to buy their tickets for twenty twenty three because uh, it's going to be a hot ticket item and get your tickets as soon as you can. Sure. Um, well, first the show is August eleventh to thirteenth. Uh, nice. Those of you who came last year who were disappointed that the vendor room was not open on Friday, I am happy to say that it will. Be open on Friday this year, so uh, kind of plus there. Uh, you can find us at liretro.com. Uh, you can find tickets and everything else there. There's links to our YouTube. Uh, we're on all the socials. We're LA Retro, except for Facebook. Uh, just just search and we'll come up. It's it's like <laughs> LA Retro Gaming Expo because LA Retro is some guy in South America or something. Uh, of course, couldn't couldn't get that one. Uh, and if you you know, if you have a question about the show, you can find the contact us on the website, but you can also just email info at laretro.com. If you got a homebrew game, if you want to be a, you know, a vendor in the marketplace, if you want to help out and uh, you want to you want to help out the museum who are currently recruiting. Right, Mike? Yeah, uh, that, that, that we are for, for a little, little you know, extra help. This thing doesn't happen, you know, without... Uh, a lot of dedicated people. So, and as we grow, we, we need more mm-hmm. to help, you know, mm-hmm. make the experience awesome for everybody. And, and that's it. I hope uh, if you've come in the past, I hope you've really had a good time. And uh, if you didn't, I hope you told us why in the survey so we could fix it. And I hope to see everybody back this August. Yeah. Uh, it's a, it's a great time of year. Uh, I love the, that weekend. Uh, it also always happens to be the weekend before my birthday. So, it's a nice. pretty good back to back, um, so uh, I I appreciate that, and I just I just love everything about this. So Joel, once again, thank you for being on the show. Uh, we really appreciate it, and um, everyone out there, be sure to follow Long Island Retro Gaming on all the social media channels that Joel just mentioned. Get your tickets, and let's get ready to play some video games, folks. Play and don't don't forget to play video games in general like just do it just go out there support the community go go to your local retro game shops visit local retro arcades talk to your friends about it and then get really excited and then come to the cradle of aviation for, from august 11th through the 13th of 2023 and spend the whole weekend with a bunch of people who just really like playing video games um once again joel thank you and um everyone out there we'll catch you next time take care everyone and if you have a disc of tron please bring it to the show they, you heard it bring it